Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. It's Saturday morning. It's 11 a.m., which means this is live camera tutorial number four. I had to think there. Number one, week one, we did ISO. Week two, we covered aperture and aperture priority. Week three, which was last week, I believe, we covered shutter. The days and the weeks, just they just kind of roll in at the minute. Joy's a lockdown. And today's week four, so I'm going to be talking to you about manual exposure control full manual exposure control. Um, what we have talked about, sorry, let me, I can't see the comments on the screen. Let's just see those. There we go. Um, hello. So yeah, um, what we've been looking at over the last three weeks is manual exposure control. You've manually controlled your ISO, you've manually controlled your aperture, you've manually set your shutter speed. So those are manual exposure controls. However, manual, which is the M on your function dial, is complete and total manual control. In aperture priority, you set the aperture. You've already manually set your ISO. So your ISO, as you remember, gives you that base level, that, that reference of how much light there is available in your scene. Uh, you then set your aperture, so you know you want to control your depth of field. So I want f5.6. Camera says, great, your ISO 100. I can give you a 30th of a second. Shutter priority, you tell the camera what shutter speed you want. You've told it your ISO 400. You've told the camera you want, I don't know, a 500th of a second, for example, in bright conditions. Your ISO 400, and the camera goes right when you press the shutter button halfway down to focus. The camera goes, okay, I can give you an aperture of f4. Yeah? This is completely different. You have complete and total control of your exposure. There's no backup, there's no help from the camera, it's all on you. So if you make a mess of it, it's your fault. You can't blame the camera, okay? Um, those of you who I know have digital SLRs, there's a couple of you I know out there who have, um, that also have um, uh, bridge cameras or uh, high-end compacts with the big lenses that will not, um, that, that are fixed to the lens, fixed, I can't talk this morning, not enough coffee, that fixed to the camera, you can't interchange them, they're not removable. You're going to find, if you haven't done already, you've got some limitations and you might not have all of the scope and the settings that I've potentially mentioned historically. But today it's all about M. It's all about controlling your, the light coming through the camera, what's hitting the camera sensor manually. So first and foremost, I, so I've got my phone there just so I can see who is watching and who's there. Um, so I am going to first and foremost have a quick look and show you how you get to the manual section of your camera and what you see when you do. So I'm just going to go to the camera. So bear with me, you're going to lose me for a second. And you will notice, those of you with me last week will notice that you can actually hear me better this week because I decided to buy a wireless mic. So last week you said, I oh, can't hear you, can't hear you because I've moved away from the microphone on the laptop. But now I have radio mic so hopefully you can all hear me so this is your function dial of your camera i can't get any closer guys sorry apologies let's just see if that'll focus there will it no so here we have your function dial of your camera this is the eos rp okay this is a lovely bit of kit canon very kindly sent me to play with um so you've got your program mode TV, if you're a Canon user, you're going to see TV. If you've got air, which is time value, shutter priority. Everyone else, it's going to be an S. AV, aperture value, aperture priority. For everybody else, A. And M. Now, M is manual, okay? Very simple, very straightforward. So what I'm going to try and do, if I, this, this is where my, tri, my tripod head on this has just died over the week, so let's just manually lift it so what we have here let's go turn the camera on it helps pull and we're in manual there you go and what you're going to see bottom left hand corner is your shutter speed bottom right hand corner is your aperture so we're currently a 30 per second iso 800 for some bizarre reason 5.6 at 30 per second so if you get hold of your thumb wheel in manual mode next to the shutter button, the bit that you push to take the picture, and you adjust that, you will see 
that your aperture changes, he says, hopefully. There we go. So your thumb wheel on your cameras, your aperture will change when you move that function, okay? And then you want to be able to change shutter speed. For those of you who don't have two wheels, those of you that are on things, I don't know, the 100 series, so EOS, I don't know, Canon EOS, 100, 200, 350, 450, 800, 600, anything like that, or the, or the, the T's of the world, the 90D, the 80D, yeah? you'll find you've got a little button, which is AV plus minus. So on the back of your camera, I haven't got it on here, on the back of your camera, you've got something that says AV plus minus. In manual mode, you have to hold that button down and use your thumb wheel to change your shutter speed, okay? So that's how you change your shutter speed. So you can manually change your aperture and then the other wheel. So if, you're if you've got one, you press your AV plus minus button, which is normally around about here. If you can see that, yeah, my thumb, normally around here on your cameras. And then you can then change that. Yeah, so that's kind of how manual works. And what you will see is at the bottom here, you've got um, an exposure meter, and that will show you where you are in exposure. But we're going to get into that in a second. I just wanted to give you a look at where the function is and how it's going to work and just very quickly i've got my 100d here but the battery is flat as a pancake just so you can see what i'm talking about i don't know if that's going to work let's just move the rp wobble so on the back of the camera here focus pull there you go back of the camera here just above that little wheel just above that little joy power it says q set you've got av plus minus yeah so you press and hold that, and then you move your thumb wheel, and that will change your shutter speed. Release that, and just use your thumb wheel next to the shutter release, and that will change your aperture. So that's how you control your aperture and your shutter speed in manual mode. ISO stays exactly the same. You press your ISO button, you go into your menu of your camera, and that's exactly how you change it. There's no change to that at all. It's exactly as we looked at it in week one. Let's put the camera back over here because you want to be able to see me. Well, do you? Who knows? And we're back. Right, and that's when we hope the camera will focus. Hello. Right, let's just get it very quickly just to focus on me. Bear with. There we go. We have focus. Um, so... What, and you can only see my head. So you should now. Not just, there we go, there's a bit more room there. This is good. So, and that little beep is me focusing the camera just in case you uh, are wondering. So, let's get rid of the else utility. And, oh, yeah, so. There we are. So what I'm going to show you, I'm going to talk you through what um, manual is, okay? So manual, you control the exposure, control the ex manual exposure effectively, yeah, or efficiently. So all your DSLRs have an exposure meter built into your camera. So when you're changing your aperture and your shutter independently of each other, because remember in the priority modes, if you're an aperture priority, you change your aperture, the camera will set the shutter speed for you to give you a beautifully balanced, perfectly exposed image. In theory, it doesn't always work, but hey, you work with that. Um, you will then find that um, these are displayed, so these exposure meters are displayed within your viewfinder, normally kind of bottom middle, and it's a scale, and I'm going to show you that in a second. And it gives you visual re re ha, visual representation even um, of your exposure level. So what you will see is when you go into when you look at your exposure meter, and it could be in the viewfinder, it could be on the back screen of your camera. If you use your camera on the back of the screen to use as a viewfinder, all your information that you need, your aperture, your shutter, exposure, and your light meter is there. And it will show you whether you are correctly exposed underexposed or overexposed correctly exposed the right amount of light coming in underexposed 
to be a bit dark, not enough light coming in, underexposure, yeah, not enough light. Overexposed, bright, way too bright, you lose your highlights, you can't see much detail, too much light coming into the camera body. And that looks something like this. He says trying to find it. So yeah, so what you're going to find on the back of your cameras is um, your viewfinder or your screen will show you exactly what's going on. Yeah, so I'm just trying to find my, um, there we go. Just trying to find my presentation for you. There we go, so you can see it. Woohoo! Um, so what we have is this is rep this is a uh, this is what your exposure meter back your camera is going to look like. Canon and Nikon. Sony, I think, is similar to Ca uh, similar to Nikon. So on the Canon scale, obviously, I'm a Canon user. So that's just that's just me. So that's why I've gone with Canon and Nikon because they are the two kind of most common brands that are purchased in the world. Um, you have your scale. You see that. On the top of the cannon, you've got this kind of little squarish pentagon triangle thing looking down. And what that will show you is where, uh, where your correctly exposed point is. So that little marker shows you where your correct exposure point is. And you'll see on the, um, on the, oh, I can see my cursor now. There we go. So here you will see that that is correctly exposed. We go down to the Nikon one underneath. Zero is correctly exposed. So if your little your little block underneath is uncorrectly on zero, <clears throat> you've got the light balance perfectly. If you then go to the left, if you have a look at the top where the Canon example is, you've got so where the central um, point is, you've got the two squares and then the one then the two squares and then the two and that's minus so that is under exposed yeah less light you go back to your center point that little um uh pentagon -y style triangle thing pointing down technical term there guys um that marker you go to the right you've got a square a square and one a square a square and two and that's plus okay so that's overexposed that's more light and if you look down at the bottom of that little image, then you've got the, um, the example of the actual Nikon scale. Zero, if you go left, now it's backwards. It's, it's the wrong way round to the Canon. It's the opposite way round to the Canon. So dot, dot, dash, one, dot, dot, dash, two, and then plus. So if you work left, if you're a Nikon user, it will go um, underexposed. If you work right from your zero, dot, dot, dash, one dot dot dash two and that is underexposed that's darker so it's backwards but hey that's how it works but when you look through when you set your um your exposure manually if you want to make sure that you're correctly exposed and you want to make sure that that little that little marker that moves as you adjust your shutter speed or your aperture depending which you choose to change that shows you whether you're perfectly exposed, under, over. Now these little dots, these little markers in between your central point and your ones and your twos, these refer to third stops. So you've got the square, the first square, on the, I'm, I'm up at the Canon marker here, so the first square is a third of a stop, the second square is two thirds of a stop, and then you get your one stop to the one, then you go to one and a third stops, one and two third stops, and then two stops on the left. So we're working on the underexposure side of things from the central marker, from the zero, if you like. First one to the left, underexposed by a third of a stop. The next marker is two thirds of a stop, then you get to your one. And it works the other way. And what these are, these are increments. These are guides. You remember I've said previously that, you know, it's all well and good now, well, I need to move this, this and this, but you need some sort of reference. You need to know what you're doing and how you're doing it. So this is telling you how much under or overexposed you might be. So you then know um, how to adjust it. It's worth knowing every time you click your thumb wheel, left or right, it will move your marker 
one increment, so that one third stop. So every so three clicks, three one two three 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 touches of the wheel, three movements of the wheel is a stop. And this is the same with manual. This is the same in aperture priority or shutter priority. Now, so if you move your wheel three times, click click click, you will find that you're you are increasing or decreasing your aperture or your shutter speed depending on what you're controlling by a stop and you remember I'm, I've said that a stop is an increment it's a movement yeah cool so how to use manual exposure why would you use manual exposure sorry in in manual exposure mode aka M yeah talk about M because that's how it's on your dial you get complete and total exposure control so you are in control 120 percent okay you can do this and you think well why on earth would I want to do this, Paul, when the aperture or the shutter priority gives me a really, really good um, control? You know, I set the aperture, I've got the ISO set, and the camera's going to do the shutter. Why would I want to mess around using manual? Well, as we said, there's no assistance from the camera. This is all on you guys, yeah? If you mess it up and it's too light or too, too light or too dark, and that's not what you want, then you know that's down to you, that's not down to the camera. This allows purposeful under and over exposure. Yeah. Why do I want to do that? I'm going to come to that in a second. Sometimes you will want to be able to over and underexpose your images depending on what you're seeing through your L C D screen. You've taken your picture and thinking, yeah, that looks a little bit dark, because your camera's in aperture priority, shutter priority, the camera's going, yeah, that's great. Or even in your manual exposure mode, your little markers on your zero or your little um, um, pentagon triangle marker. I think, yeah, great. But you might look and think, actually, that's a bit dark. Yeah, there's not enough light on this part of the image. That part of the image is, is too dark. Yeah, so you, you've you got wiggle room. It's not a technical term, but I'm going to use it. And you get extended creative possibilities. Now, again, I'm going to... I'm alluding to that now. I'm going to show you some examples of this in a sec. So how to use your... Ooh, I've got a bounce on my presentation. Excellent. How to use M effectively, so your manual mode. How do you use it effectively? So once in your manual mode, you've got complete and total control of the aperture and the shutter values completely independently. So you decide... I'm at f5.6, and aperture priority, the camera might say, well, I'm going to give you 125th of a second. You're thinking, well, actually, that's a bit quick. I want it slower because I've got movement going on, and you can do that. Some tips for you. Okay, when you're using manual, you need to have a clear outcome in mind. Yeah, this is a massive thing for me, and what I do as a food photographer, I shoot 99.999% of the time in manual, whether I'm using available light, or artificial light flash something like that yeah so what you will find is it's easier to create to get your image right using manual if you know what you're trying to achieve yeah nine times out of ten when I'm working with a client we've discussed it we've got a little mood board we've got an idea of how we want it to look we said we want it to look light and bright and airy we want it to look dark and moody we want it to look at yeah so we know what we're trying to achieve so having that outcome having that picture in your head of what you want to achieve in the first place it helps. Decide on the exposure setting that is really most important to your composition. Yeah. So for me, I'm all about aperture. I'm all about depth of field. I want to make sure that the food in my image has the right amount of sharpness. It's as sharp as it should be. Yeah. So the right part of it, for example, we've talk, I've talked about cakes on multiple occasions. You know, so if you've got a cake facing you, it's a big, tall chocolate cake with lots of pretty decorations on it. I want to make sure that the front of that cake and the frosting on top and the little decorations on top are pin sharp. I'm level with it. I'm parallel to it. I can't see the top of it. I'm not going up over. I'm not angled the camera over about 45 degrees. I'm shooting head on. Yeah. So I want to make sure that the front of that cake is pin sharp. I don't want to see any... I don't want the front of it that you're pointing, you're looking directly at to be sharp and then where the cake curves round, I don't want to lose that curve. I want the whole curve of that cake in focus. So I know aperture is what I'm going to focus on. 
make sure you select an appropriate ISO based on your exposure setting. Now, I always start with ISO. ISO, it's the exposure triangle we've talked about, yeah? We've always said, you've got your ISO, you've got your aperture, and you've got your shutter. I will always start by setting my ISO, and generally it's under 400 ISO, because when I'm shooting food, I wanna make sure that I've got a clear, 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 even crisp, um, image. I don't want it too noisy. I don't want to have to go up to ISO 800, 1600, where you start to get a loss in clarity. You get more uh, grain or digital noise coming through. And so here we go. Examples for you. So we are, this is um, South Sea Pier from memory. So what we've got here is um, three shots. And I've started uh, F22, no, I'm not, yeah, so this is F22, 25 seconds. And this, I believe, is underexposed by a stop. Sorry, I can't see the details at the bottom. One of my windows is covering it, and I can't change it. We're now F22 at 13 seconds. If we just go back, so this is overexposed, yeah? This is, according to my camera exposure meter, so that little marker, in the center, halfway between halfway between the ones, I've got m my marker that I'm moving on dead center. So that's, according to the camera, that's perfectly exposed. I've then underexposed, so I've then decreased my shutter speed. So I'm shifting, I've not, I'm not touching the aperture here, I'm just changing my shutter speed. My ISO, let's show you, ISO has remained at ISO 50 throughout. F22, aperture. Great depth of field, yeah? 25 seconds, this is overexposing. This is giving it one stop more light. This is what the camera thinks is correct. 13 seconds. According to the, uh, the, the camera meter in the viewfinder. And this is darker. So they all, they all have their merits. When you overexpose, you get, if you have a look at on the left-hand side of the image here, we're overexposing by a stop. You've got some nice kind of detail under that pier. All the metalwork, you're seeing a little bit of light coming in through there, some highlight popping through. And the second you go to what the camera thinks is correct, which is darker, you're losing that detail under the pier. Second you go even darker, you lose all that detail, but what you are gaining is the sky so you're maintaining your highlight detail look at the end of that pier just kind of top left hand corner of the image coming down you've got that beautiful little pop of orangey red highlight coming in just under the rail yeah go back so this is overexposed look the highlights gone completely yeah the sky the sea there's just there's no detail Correct camera exposure, you're starting to get that colour coming through. Yeah, you start to get the sky colour coming through, the, the sun's starting to set, you're starting to get that beautiful kind of orangey, pinky, red coming in. And then the second you underexpose even more, look at that, that highlight. I'm going to try and move my cursor. It's dark. There we go. I don't know if you can see that. So you've got on the corner, coming down from the top left corner of this image, where the railing is, you've got that, just that, that ping of highlight, that beautiful kind of pinky, reddy, orangey highlight under the railing. You then go a bit further back into the image where you've got that little jetty coming out, the highlights on there. Look at the sky, yeah, beautiful blue going a little bit purple, fading down from the top of the frame into your kind of orangey, pinky, reddy stuff going on. Really nice. So this is what manually controlled exposure will do. Ah! Yeah, so over, camera correct, under. That's worth playing with. Now, you might think, well, why would I want to do that? If I'm going to, if I'm going to take an image, I want it to be right, and you'd probably go with this one, what the camera thinks is correct. But if you're not, if you want to see what's going on underneath the pier itself, under that structure, then you overexpose. If you're not worried about that, and you want to get a really, you want to see that highlight coming through, yeah, there we go. Good morning, Mr. Cocker. Um, right. As you know, or most of you know, I photograph food for a living. Um, primarily cookbooks. 
and manual is my go-to. 99.999% of the time I'm setting manual for two reasons. One, I'm a control freak. <laughs> Let's not mess about here, guys. I like to be in control. I don't want to be told by a piece of electronic kit, that's what you need to do. No, I know what I'm doing. I've spent X amount of years learning to do this stuff, X amount of years practicing it and with experience. I know what I want. The little black box with, lent with bits of glass and electronics in it, I know better than you, fella. You're a tool, okay? In the practical sense, yeah? It's a physical tool. Let's just clarify that. Um, so what you need to bear in mind is looking here on the left-hand side, this is a tortilla, um, egg, potato, all sorts of funky stuff. Um, and this was an example in which I captured. This is not an example of my work. This is me just giving you an example. So what the camera thought was correct, left-hand side, the darker one, F2.8, two seconds at ISO 50. I have set my aperture manually, I've set my shutter speed manually, and I've balanced it. So that um, the exposure meter in the camera on the back of the screen, wherever you happen to look at it, your marker is on that dead center point. Zero if you're Nikon and the little um, uh, uh, penta pentagonal, there we go, the pentagonal, that's a good word, pentagonal triangle pointing down. So that's dead center, that's camera correct. The camera says, yeah, that's properly exposed. I'm like, do you know what? I don't like that. There's too much shadow in that section I've cut out. You can't see the bit of tomato and the, and the bit of potato and the mushroom and stuff that's in there. Um, you can see that lovely little bit of spring onion, which kind of looks like a heart, actually. That's a bit of a happy accident. But it's not clear. And for me, I want to show a bit of that layering. Yeah, And it's too dark. It looks burnt. It's not. It's caramelized. But, um, yeah, so you then go to the other image. I've gone, do you know what? I'm going to give it a bit of extra light. I've gone, I've overexposed by a stop. Now, what I've done with this is I said to the camera, okay, I'm going to keep it f2.8 because I like the depth of field. I like how this looks. I like the detail in, um, in that cut section. I like the fact you can just about see those, um, uh, those slices of spring onion on top. You can see that little heart in the center, which is kind of, again, happy accident, but I love it. And you can see the bits that have fallen out when I've taken the slice out. Great. It's brighter. It's lighter. It's what we call light and airy. To a degree, it's probably a little overexposed. I could have probably gotten away with going down to four seconds rather than five. But hey, hindsight, amazing thing. So that is how I would use manual exposure. Now, when I shoot, I shoot two ways. I shoot with available light. So whatever is available, what is coming through your window, what is coming out of the light sources in your house, your location, yeah? So if you're outside, your available light, your light source is the sun, whether it be there or not. Um, I will generally shoot with available light, so daylight through a big window, or I will use studio flash. So I will use big versions of the flashes that pop up on your on your camera, yeah? But it basically, they're, they're large, powerful sources which are instantaneous. As such, your shutter speed will not control flash. So when I'm using flash, and don't get too bogged down this, I'm just telling you why I use manual and what other effects and functions manual have. Um, you need to shoot manual when you're shooting with flash. Studio flash. Flash gun on top of your camera? Not so much. Big industrial commercial style um, so studio flash? You need to because the shutter speed will not help to control the flash. Okay? It's all about the aperture. So when I'm shooting with flash, I use manual because it gives me complete and total control. But that's a different story for a completely different day. Do not get too bogged down in that, boys and girls. Right. Now this is very, very subtle, but by the same token, relevant. So here we have some lovely roasted vegetables, camera correct exposure, marker on the center, on the zero, if you're a Nikon, if you're a Nikon user of your internal camera light meter, yeah? F2.8, I've chosen camera, the correctly balanced exposure, according to the camera, is 1 125th of a second, and I'm at ISO 160. I was hand-holding, this is daylight, okay? Um, so it's fine, but 
I th do you know what? There's just it's a bit dark. If you have a look at the the courgette bottom left hand corner, they just look. It just looks a bit dodgy. It's just not quite light enough for what I want. Now you'll notice I was hand holding because the frames are not the same. If I was on a tripod and I'd shot this bit by bit, I'd go one twenty fifth of a second down to an eightieth. The frame wouldn't move. I was hand holding, so I'm human. Yeah, you've got a little bit of little bit of frame movement. But hey, I don't think it does a massive, massive, it's not a huge issue here. But you will see if you look at the frame on the left, the 125th of a second, and the 180th of a second on the right, there is a little bit of difference. Look at that um, that slab of courgette on the bottom left-hand corner on the left-hand image. Yeah, and then look at the same piece on the right. It's a little bit lighter. You've got more highlights, what we call specular highlights. There's little pops of light coming off because I'm allowing more light in. The spatula is a tad brighter. Top court, the top kind of third of each of those images is a little bit brighter. Yeah. So just by giving it that little bit extra, you don't need to go crazy. You don't need to go one stop, four stops, 27 stops. Yeah. If you could do that. It's very subtle just to give it that little bit of something, something, which is exactly what I've done. So I hope that is okay. Is everybody with me so far? Have I lost anybody? Were you with me up until I started talking about M? If you've got any questions, any issues, please throw them into the comments while we're doing that. Let's just say, oh, hi Kelly, hi Mark, hi Neil, Anne, you're right, Ped. Uh, Kit, morning, Susan, Adrian, Matt, you're right, Treacle. Cool. Um, yeah, all these people watching, lovely, lovely, lovely. So. What we're going to do now is I'm just going to flick on. This is where, using manual, you can get really creative. I said in your, um, thank you, Mr. C, thanks, babe, great. So what you will see, I mentioned earlier that, you know, you can get more creative control. You can get more, more, more creative, cheers, Mark, more creative with the, um, the imaging. Now, I've got two images here, actually one of them, and I've got one slightly later. These are shot in manual. Um, as you know, I teach photography, taught, I teach at an adult education centre in Woking, and this is one of my students, Lakel Kaz Plowen, um, possibly one of the most creatively minded people I think I've met doing my courses. Um, I hope she's not on here because she's going to get so embarrassed. Um, she hula hoops. Yeah, she juggles. She's a bit of a circus. She loves to do a bit um, uh, the whole kind of circus thing, and she hula hoops. Now these are LED. This is one LED hula hoop. Okay, this is eleven seconds at ISO one hundred. Now this will not have been what the camera thinks is right. What she's done is she has she has stood there for about a second. Yeah, and then she's got hold of a hula hoop. And she's gone crazy the rest of the 10 seconds with it. It's an LED hula hoop, so it lights up. Yeah, this is a darkened room. So she's gone, do you know what? I need about 11 seconds to make these shapes. So this is exactly what I'm talking about with manual. So this is technically what we call light painting. So in a darkened room, you get something that's bright and shiny, a light source. It could be your phone torch. It could be an LED, I don't know, a glow stick, you know, anything you happen to have that, glow, that lights up. Yeah, you can get little torches, stuff like that. Put bits of um, quality street wrappers over the torch, give it a different colour. Other sweets are available. Um, yeah, and just go crazy with it. So she's got these LED hula hoops and she's stood there for about a second. She's gone crazy with the hula hoops for, with the hula hoop for nine, ten seconds from memory from, what she, from how she described it to me. And then she, again, she's come back to the front and she's kind of stood still. In a darkened room, that amount of movement, light movement, light movement is captured. When we looked at shutter last week, I showed you traffic trails, yeah? And the fact that, in a, that any light in a dark scene will be captured over a long period of time. Exactly the same theory, just a bit more creative. So, that's fine, Paul. What if I want an exposure longer than 30 seconds? Hmm. Why would you want an exposure longer than 30 seconds? Right, these are traffic trails. We mentioned traffic trails, and this is the chippy round the corner from me up on the main road. And 
it's nicely lit and you know you've got traffic lights and all these kind of all, all, all the street lights and so on look at the exposure time guys look at the exposure time I'm just gonna go what you will see in your in your shutter speeds so in your shutter priority in your manual the longest exposure you can achieve in manual or in shutter priority is 30 seconds yeah or is it in those modes it is those of you who have um, the kind of the the mid to entry to mid level SLRs will find if you go into your manual mode of your camera and you get down to 30 seconds if you tweak it one more time you get you'll either get something in the viewfinder that says bulb or B and this is how I've achieved 204 seconds what's that um, uh, 6120 that's just under four minutes yeah f22 just under four minutes at ISO 100 long exposure to get all all the traffic lights all the car movements yeah so this is another example of a longer exposure than 30 seconds I'm going to show you tell you how to do this and show you how to do it in a minute this is another one of Kaz's and this is her LED um, LED hula hoops and she's got her other half to literally walk with it stop walk with it stop walk with it stop five seconds five second movement or however long it happened to be probably shorter than that 11 times yeah probably a second move a second move a second move a second move 55 seconds here yeah beautiful yeah look at that highlight on um, on the car on the right hand side of the frame and it looks like a um, you know those tubes you get at kids some um, soft play places yeah it looks like one of those doesn't it but literally he's moved and stopped moved and stopped moved and stopped and all that motion all that light motion during that 55 seconds yeah just under a minute is captured because the shutter's open and all that minute all that 55 seconds that motion can get captured if he just stepped to one side come out closer to where the car is and gone back in you'd see a little like a little curve kind of in and out yeah like a little triangle coming out so how you create this is something called bulb exposure are we all with me so far i've started to rattle onto something i like so my apologies everybody got me so far we understand we've got the idea of manual you control it completely and that you don't have to just lighten and darken an image you can use long exposures you can manually tell the camera i want the shutter open for this length of time at this aperture why can't we ah why can't we see him that's okay you can't see him because the exposure is so long and that movement will be um, very very quick yeah when you do long exposures yeah no um, yeah I'm with you kit so we're talking about the the uh, blue tunnel yeah so the blue tunnel there is movement and stopping i might be wrong about how you know how long he stopped for but it's literally movement stop movement stop so it could be a step a move a step a move but that is giving you that little bit of movement yeah it is a perfect way to show movement and it's kind of funky as well if he'd have just walked solidly with that LED you'd have just seen this beautiful tunnel of light going through but where he stopped even for a split second he's still moving too quick for the camera to catch him he'd need to be stood still for probably a second or more to see any sort of resemblance of a person yeah so it's just you can keep moving if you were to try this at home and in a darkened room and get yourself a torch and write your name backwards pointing the camp pointing at the camera and then f5.6 at about try 10 seconds or however long it takes you to write your name you won't see you as long as it's a darkened room you will just see whatever you've written in the torch backwards or whatever shape you've created if you just go crazy with the torch all kind of swooping circular motions you're going to see you know all that movement but you're not going to see the person behind it okay does that answer the question kit you cool with that I'm going to take that as a yes and move on so bulb exposure some of you with more expensive cameras will have on your function dial next to your M a B button 
and whether it be a, if it's Canon, it's generally a B. If it's Nikon, it's you actually have bulb and Sony, I believe, have a B as well. And bulb exposure is a mode. If bulb mode is a setting, it's either within your manual mode or your bulb. It varies from brand to brand, varies from model to model. Cool. Thanks, Kit. Um, so I've got the comments going on on the side. So what you're going to find is if you don't have a B on your function dial, when you go into your manual setting of your camera, this will not work in shutter priority, by the way, ladies and gents, this will only work in manual. If you go down to the, if you go to the M mode of your camera, the manual mode of your camera, and you get your shutter speed down to 30 seconds, try and go one further, yeah? And you'll get B or bulb come up. And what bulb exposure is, it allows you to physically control the amount of time the shutter is open for. Okay, so you press your shutter button to open the shutter and you keep it depressed. The second, the millisecond you release that shutter button in bulb exposure mode, that's when the shutter closes. So it's entirely 100% on you. No automation, bog standard, you in control. And bulb exposure is called bulb exposure because historically, going back, you know, 50, 60, 70, just going back to kind of like the, the late 1800s, yeah, this was the only way you could control an exposure. There were no automated shutter speeds. There wasn't that, yeah. You had literally, the reason it's called bulb exposure is you had, go back, call it 1890 for argument's sake. Yeah, we've all seen pictures in movies and pictures from, you know, pictures of people having their pictures taken in that kind of time. And they... Generally, you've got a guy, nice top hat, big black coat, looking smart, nice, with a big camera. And it's what we call a plate camera. So you have a lens at one end and a piece of glass at the other, which is covered in chemicals, which will then um, capture the light. And then you can treat that and turn it into an image. Um, but you also see generally a cable coming off of the back of that. And they'll have like a big, what looks like a small bag in the hand or a bulb. And that was generally... Um, a bulb, a small sack made of animal skin, hide, something like that. And that was then, there was, a, there was a pipe sewn into that, so that was airtight. It would let air in, but it would then um, push that. When you squeezed it, you'd push that air through the tube. And at the end of the tube connected to the camera was a little pin. When you pushed that bulb, squeezed that bulb, however you did it, the air would push through and push that pin into the shutter release, which would then open the shutter. The second you released your bulb, your bag, your sack, or whatever, you know, whatever it happens to be, the air would come out, the pin would come back through, and the shutter would close. Okay? Bulb exposure, that's where it's come from. History lesson for you, boys and girls, you're welcome. And that's the only way you can create the shutter cycle. The shutter cycle, remember from last week, is the action of the shutter opening and closing to let the light from the camera body into your sensor plane, your film plane, or whatever it is that's capturing your image. How do you use it? Right, select B or bulb from your camera's mode, uh, from your camera's M mode, or if you've got a B on your camera, set it like that. I'm going to show you in a second. Set your desired aperture value. Focus your frame. Yeah, so get your focus done and then fully depress your shutter release for the desired time. Now, this is where bulb exposure, it's going to be a long period of time, guys. It's not going to be a second. It's, it's going to be, you know, you can do up to 30 seconds on your camera and the camera will do it for you. You don't need to do anything apart from press the button. Yeah, you have to hold the shutter down to create this longer exposure than 30 seconds. So by holding the shutter down, if you move, move around the camera, you sneeze, you're going to cause camera shake, especially if you're not on a tripod. You can, In my opinion, you cannot use bulb exposure or actually do any long exposure over about two or three seconds without using a tripod. Yeah, Tripod is an essential piece of kit, especially here. The other essential piece of kit for doing a bulb expose or um, image, anything over 30 seconds, is a cable release. That's a remote control. You can get infrared ones, you can get cabled ones that plug in the side of your camera. I will link up some um, in the comments after I've finished here, along with this presentation and, and the sample images. I will throw in some names of models of uh, camera releases that you can get to help you. 
but you need a cable. A cable plugs into the side of the camera. You're not touching the camera. You press the button and hold it. Count to, I don't know, 55 elephants, 140 elephants, whatever you want, or Mississippi, Millennium, whatever, seconds. However you choose to time it, you let go. You're not going to get camera shake, and that's going to help you completely. Right, let me show you how we do this. Back to the camera. Hello! Right, ESRP, boys and girls, this little bad boy down here. Turn him on. So there we go. Now, if you can see this, but it has a B for bulb next to the M. I don't know, I can't see to see if you can see it. But it has a, no, you can't. But it has a B for bulb next to the M. Trust me on that. There we go. So you see the screen is completely overexposed because I'm in manual. I'm going to go into bulb mode. Yeah. And I'm just going to set my aperture to f16. ISO is huge, but we won't worry about that for the minute. can see a bit better there we go so if I need another camera so I can have a camera filming the camera while you're filming you're doing the film on the camera I haven't got a cable release for this at the moment but what I would do so bulb exposure see it says bulb in your shutter speed setting it doesn't give you a shutter speed so I'm going to hold it and this lovely little bit of kit counts me down it shows me how long exposure is so I can just let go at any point and that's then your that's then your bulb exposure it's going to be overexposed in daylight because you wouldn't use bulb exposure in theory in daylight bulb the longer exposure if you want more than 30 seconds it's typically going to be at night or in low light conditions and I've got some blasting through my window here so not going to happen and yet so literally you press it and I can just let go yeah and that's your that's your exposure so it's really simple, really straightforward, but you can get some absolutely cracking results as I've shown you. Um, oh. So, back to me, let's turn off the RP. No, it's not focused, is it? Oh, well, never mind. Let's just bring it back up so you can see me, because I've got a couple of things to say. We're just running a little over the 45 minutes, but hey, this is me. Um, there we go focused so hello back again um yeah so that's kind of a rundown of manual um that's how you work it allows you to be more creative yeah it gives you more control i'm a control freak i use manual because i'm a control freak and i don't want as i said i don't want the camera to tell me what i'm supposed to do no, I'm the photographer. I'm in charge. <laughs> I do the work. I'm telling you what to do. So that's what manual's all about. The bulb exposure, as we've discussed as well, gives you beautiful, beautiful creative control. Yeah. Um, try it in your back garden, guys. Yeah. Get the kids to run around with torches in the back garden. You know, give yourself a medium aperture, 5.6, f8, something like that. Get your eyes so low as possible. Yeah. Don't wrap your ISO up. When you're doing long exposures, remember ISO, low ISO equals high quality, yeah? Low ISO, low noise. You can get a better quality of image. You can get better clarity. Not the sharpness, not the focus, but it's going to look nicer, yeah? Um, get the kids to run around in the garden when the sun goes, when it's dark tonight. Give them some torches. Get them to go crazy. Wear off some energy before they go to bed, yeah? And just see what happens it's worth playing with it's worth experimenting with you can have some really 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 cool um effects and you know if you do that send them to me drop them drop your there we go have a have a play with manual and bulb yeah let's get let's get out in the dark in our gardens let's not go out let's stay within our homes or in our gardens let's get some torches out let's have some fun yeah um you might have kids toys that light up and do all sorts of funky stuff Torches, we've all got torches on our phones, we've all got potentially torches rocking around. Yeah, if you've got any sparklers um, in the cupboard from um, Guy Fawkes, I completely forgot what sparklers are for. Yeah, 
they're cool long exposures wicked really really cool and with manual you can increase the contrast by having your aperture a little bit smaller smaller number sorry smaller hole higher number yeah f8 f11 you want to get that dark you want that contrast have a play and if you do do that chuck them in the comments of this um of this video yeah i'm going to throw up the um the link to dropbox for this presentation a couple of minutes it normally takes about four or five minutes to upload um, i will also find some information on cable releases i will throw it out for canon nikon and sony um, you can get them from all sorts of great places now i've been mentioning i've got this canon eos rp from Canon. Why have you got a Canon EOS RP? Why are Canon sending you stuff, Paul? Well, on Tuesday at 10.30, that's this coming Tuesday, the 5th of May, at 10.30, on the Camera World Facebook page, that's facebook.com forward slash camera world, I will be doing, with Camera World and Canon, a one-hour food photography live stream workshop. And there's going some toys to play with, so yay! Love toys to play with. So there we go. Um, if you've got an hour, or if you haven't, you can watch it after the event on the Camera World Facebook page, and I'm sure I might share it, who knows. So I'm going to be doing a live food photography workshop at 10.30 on the Camera World Facebook page on Tuesday, 10.30. So yeah. Any questions relating to manual exposure, drop me a message. You know, you can access me through here. A lot of you have my email address. A lot of you have, you know, contact with me. Ping me a message, ask me a question, yeah? Not a problem at all. Play with manual, guys. Get outside in the dark with your torches, yeah? Let's see some funky stuff going on and drop them into the comments on this video. So it's been a little longer than I thought. My apologies. Um, stay safe. Stay at home, guys. Lovely weather. Stay in your gardens. You know, open your windows. Have fun. Be out at um, 8 o'clock on Thursday clapping for our NHS and our frontline workers because they deserve it, doing a great job. Look after yourself, stay safe, have fun with your cameras, and I will see you hopefully on Tuesday, but if not, same time, same place next week, where I think I'm going to look at black and white. So if you, um, yeah, either black and white or white balance, haven't quite decided yet, send me a message, drop me a comment next week, black and white or white balance. You tell me. I can do both. Tell me which one you want to play with first. And yes. Stay safe, stay at home, lots of love guys, take care, see you soon. Bye.